Now, I don't know if you know this, but I'm terrifying. You see, I tried to show something so horrific, so just obscene at my school last year that parents sent threats to the school to make sure that I couldn't show what I wanted to show. Now, brace yourselves because what I'm about to show you is really scary. This is the horrifying presentation that I tried to show students at my middle school last year. Whew. I told them to be kind to each other. Can you believe it? I'm getting goosebumps just now. Or maybe that's just me here speaking. Um, but shifting gears a little bit, I have a question for you all. Now, how many of you think that it's important to have diversity in your workplace? Raise your hand. Wow, cool. A banana, too. Um, so I talked to Mary Scotton, who is a developer at um, Salesforce, a diversity advocate, an all-around cool person. And she gave this presentation where she said that diverse teams often outperform non-diverse teams. And so if Mary Scotton knows that it's important to have diversity in your workplaces, and I know that it's important to have diversity in your workplaces, you all just told me that you know that it's important to have diversity in your workplaces, then why do we still lack diversity in our workplaces? I'm not even in the workplace yet. I don't know if you noticed, but I'm young. <laughs> like, really young. I'm a freshman. But this doesn't make sense even to me. What, what, is, what causes this? Raise your hands. This is a, y'all can answer. It's not that early. OK. Um, I talked to some other people in the tech industry, and a common answer I found that it was a pipeline issue that there just weren't enough diverse people going up into college for CS degrees and that weren't getting interested in high school. And that's the reason why we don't have enough diversity in tech. So what do you think of this? Is it a pipeline issue? Another part where you raise your hands? Yeah? Ish? What is it then? No? Come on, y'all. It's not a trick question. Well, you're all slightly wrong. It is, it's a pipeline issue. That's it. And there's nothing we can do at all, you know, of course. It's not our problem. It's the millennials. It's HR. It's not us. That's it. That's my presentation. Thanks, y'all. Well, really, it's my fault, if I'm going to be honest here. I'm the pipeline. I mean, it's the reason we don't have more diversity in tech is because me, People like me don't want to go into it. You see, my dad and brothers are all in tech and computing and engineering. And since I was old enough to hold a soldering gun, they were trying to get me interested. In fact, for my eighth birthday, my dad got me that heart-shaped soldering board kit to try to get me interested. And when I was like six, my brother taught me binary on the back of an envelope one car trip. And they encouraged me to join a robotics team. And so in sixth grade, I joined an FLL team, and we went to world championships, and we placed. And that was really fun, but despite it all, I still didn't want to go into tech. I don't know why. I just didn't really feel like I had a place. But we'll talk about that a little bit later. First, why am I here? Like, what? I'm out of place a little bit here as a high schooler, but what is the cause of this? Well, you see, it's quite a story, and it starts with one small fact. I, Kate Hirschfeld, did one of the most threatening things that a teenager in Central Texas can do at a public school. I was gay. No gasps here either? Wow. Tough crowd. Um, I had realized my sexuality in maybe sixth or seventh grade, and middle school is already just a mess. And with all the hormones and homework and puberty and who likes who and I don't know what's happening with my body, ah! It's already just, can you all hear me? Yeah. It's already just a roller coaster, and questioning your sexuality on top of all of that can be terrifying and really isolating and not at all fun. And so in eighth grade, uh, when I was a little bit more confident with myself, got a cooler haircut, it was all good, um, I made this presentation to basically speak to the whole school, but also just 
the kids who were in my position in seventh grade, those ones that were panicking and shaking and like, oh, I'm totally not gay. What does that word even mean? What? Um, and so I made this presentation that went over a few of the basics of gender and sexuality label-wise and like how to be an ally and about respect, but mostly it was just about kindness and not freaking out. And you don't need to feel isolated. You're not alone, I promise you. But the fact that it had a rainbow on it and that I preferred to date girls set off alarms in some of the parents' uh, brains in the district. And they sent threats to the school, threatening the principal and threatening me, a teenage girl. Um, and my presentation was canceled and banned. And after that, it got a lot of social media attention, like a lot. In fact, that link there, which you can go to if you want, it's the original presentation. It now has over 6,000 downloads from people in almost 60 countries all around the world. And because of all that social media attention, I got invited to speak here. Whew. So here I am. Cool. <laughs> Thank you. Um, woo. Uh, at least the microphone shocked that I'm gay if no one else is. Um, but I used this whole experience with the school and the parents, and I used it as a doorway to talk about real, relevant, important topics with people in this industry. Throughout October last year, I interviewed nine executives, um, and they were like entrepreneurs, business founders, VPs, Ps, HR, an alphabet soup of people. And they were more than just job titles, too. They were allies, advocates, people in our community, lesbians in tech, or diversity advocates for their own children. And they were all lovely people, but it's a little ironic if you look at them. They're not as diverse as I would have liked in themselves. And I mean, I'm here talking about diversity and not a very racially diverse group of people, which is, I know. <laughs> And I could write you essays of excuses about time constraints and outreach, but that'd be like you telling me that our lack of diversity in the tech world is a pipeline issue. Unacceptable. So what I will tell you is that in future projects that I'm doing, which you'll hear about later in this presentation, uh, I will be putting forth time and energy to make sure that the group of people I work with reflects what I want the tech industry to look like in the future. But after nine conversations, I started to notice some common themes when I asked them what they did at their companies to encourage diversity. And today, I will be sharing with you three of them. The first thing that you would need to do is to create a culture on purpose. Now, that's easy to say, but what the hell does that mean? Creating a culture? Well, First, you just need to talk about it. Talk with employees, just people in your workforce about respect, about what it means to be an ally, about valuing everyone's opinions. And talk about it often. It's not just a thing where you can attend one diversity training or go to one keynote speech and be all good. No, this will take reminders on the daily. Another thing is if you're in a management position, your role in creating this culture is crucial. If you make your beliefs very clear that it is not at all acceptable to treat anyone differently for any reason in this office, then it won't be threatened because your employees value their jobs over some racist joke that they could have made. Another thing is to just not deal with people who won't partake in this culture. When I talked to Caroline Boudreau, who is a founder of this nonprofit, the Miracle Foundation, and a recognized young global leader, she told me about this thing she calls her no asshole policy, where basically she doesn't work with assholes, she doesn't deal with assholes, she doesn't take money from assholes, because she values her respectful culture in her um, office and how her employees feel safe and valued more than some asshole's money. Not only do you have to create this culture, you also have to be ready to defend it, or your words will be meaningless. At my school, we have this thing called a zero-tolerance bullying policy. Some of you may have heard of this. It's where they say there's no bullying at the school because none of it will be tolerated, and that anyone who bullies anyone else, there will be consequences. But there's still bullying, 
And all the students know this, and the teachers probably too, maybe even the principals themselves. But they still claim to have this zero tolerance bullying policy. But consequences aren't always enforced, especially if the kids are athletes or really good on the football team, yeah? But because of this, there's not always a safe and respectful culture at school because these words are almost meaningless. This isn't always the case, however. When I talked to Mark Thiele, um, who is an executive at AppSera, he told me about when he actually did enforce his culture. He talked about when he was working at HP and there was a like, baseball game employee event. And one of the guys at the event who was really well liked, very productive, made a lot of money for the company, got a little drunk and did what Donald Trump claimed to have done to a woman in an audio tape a while back. He did that to one of the women at the event, which is obviously unacceptable. And that guy, despite being a really good worker and really well liked, was gone the next morning. Mark fired him. And his decision to fire him so quickly wasn't an accident or an impulse. Mark had thought about what he would do in a situation like that if it ever arose long before it actually did. All of you here, this is what you need to be doing. You need to have a plan because you can't allow these things to happen or they will continue to happen and your culture will just be in shreds. And you can't just stand by and do nothing either because passiveness is acceptance. You're just allowing it to happen. So I'm gonna give you all a few moments to think, what would you do if you were in a situation where you saw someone being disrespectful, someone else in your office? And maybe you're not in a position to fire them, but would you talk to them about it? Would you confront them? Would you take it to HR? What would you do in that situation? Because you can't allow it to happen. Take a moment. OK, cool, moment's over. Uh, if you don't have your plan now, then maybe think about that later, because this is important, y'all. Situations like this are going to arise whether or not you're prepared for them. And it's better to have at least some plan in mind. So along with creating your culture and defending it, you also have to prioritize diversity. See, diversity is one of those things where it's not like an office cat or like a plant or something. It's not something that'd be nice to have, but not really necessary, like the knickknacks you keep on the desk, no. This is important, it's crucial. Diversity is arguably one of the most important core values, particularly in the tech sector, when you're making products for a broad market. This is so important, I cannot express to you. And when I talked to Forrest Norad, he told me about a time when he really saw just how needed it was. He told me about uh, the beginnings of his company when they got all the management, management team together for a two-day workshop kind of thing. And one of the things that they had them do was they had everyone take the Myers-Briggs personality test. Do you all know that? Yeah? Um, and they separated them into two groups of the intuitive and the sensing traits. And then they gave them a prompt and 15 minutes to come up with some solutions. Uh, and so like Forrest went off with his team and talked about solutions, blah, blah, tech, blah. Um, and then at the end of the 15 minutes when the two groups came back together and compared their lists, Forrest said that there was not a single overlap between the two solutions proposed by the two groups. And that of everything that his team had talked about in their room, they hadn't even considered anything that the other team had brought to the table. He said how we all see the world through blinders, and without multiple perspectives, we'll never get a 360 degree view of a problem. Diversity is crucial. If you want to be able to come up with the best solutions, you need to be able to see a problem from all the way around. Especially with what's happening now and in the future. Diversity is going to be a competitive edge. Groups that aren't diverse will fall behind. And if you don't take initiatives to have a diverse staff, it usually won't happen. If you don't put energy into finding people that are different from you, you won't find them. And you'll be stuck with your blinders on to the detriment of your company. So revisiting that pipeline issue, okay, cool. Um, revisiting that pipeline issue I talked about in the beginning. I didn't want to go into tech. It just didn't feel like me, really. That was more my dad and brothers, but not me. I didn't think I even could, really. But 
that was until I started doing these interviews and meeting people who worked in the tech industry that I could like relate to. Whether it was other people who shared the like, common interests with me or other lesbians in tech, which I didn't know existed. And because of that, I reconsidered. It's not off my radar anymore. In fact, just last month, I asked my dad to teach me how to code. After 15 years of my brothers trying to teach me forcefully, I actually asked him. It's crazy. Um, and the solution to our pipeline issue is to have those a diverse representation in our staff. Because the younger generation, if we can look up into this world and see someone that we relate to in these positions, we will automatically just put ourselves in that space and think, maybe I could do that too. Maybe I'd like to. Maybe that's what I want to be when I grow up. And then that leads to more diverse people in the pipeline, which gives more representation in the next generations of the tech world, which makes more role models. It's a cycle. But how do we start this cycle? Since I originally gave my presentation back in November, this has been a question that I've been thinking about a lot. And how could I help? As someone with a strange position of, I actually care about these issues, but I'm not in the tech world yet. I'm still in the pipeline. This is me in my pipeline here. Um, <laughs> but I thought, what made, it, what made me reconsider? It was seeing those role models, seeing those people that we related to. So we need to connect the possible pipeline to the role models. That's one thing, right? But that only gets them inspired. That gets an interest. But there's something that's much bigger than that as well. I saw this amazing talk by Moju Miller called What Makes a Coder. And she talked about um, when she went to UC Berkeley and surveyed 900 students in the CS major there. And she found that probably even more important than a technical aptitude to keep someone in those majors is a sense of belonging. And that even if you have like a straight A student, they will still drop out of the major if they don't feel that sense of belonging. They won't stay. So along with connecting the pipeline to the role models, because those role models do exist. Though they are few and far between, we do have diverse people. And we can only grow from here. But we also need to connect the pipeline to each other. Um, so this graphic is something that I probably don't have time for. What's my time? Ooh, five minutes? Cool. It's just about how um, there's the committed youth those who know from like kindergarten or middle school or high school that like I want to go into the tech industry, yeah, regardless of how many people look like me there. But then there's, when they do exist, though they're small in number, that's how we got the people here now who are diverse. And then there's the youth candidates who are a greater number. And they're the people sort of like me who have, like can go into it, they have the potential because no one can, there's not really anyone who can't learn anything, I think. But the youth candidates need almost like peer pressure. They want to feel a sense of belonging. They want a community. They don't want to be the only ones there alone. Because like questioning your sexuality in middle school or any situation where you're the only one, it's not fun. But the solution is to provide a sense of belonging and community, to create this community. Uh, and uniting these two groups. And so I'm looking to do that uh, first through the platform of a website uh, where I can have an, a place where youth can easily connect to people who are already in the tech industry uh, that they relate to and see themselves in the role models and other people they can build a community with. So I don't have everything figured out just yet. I'm not even going to pretend that I do. But I need help. I'm looking for mentors, collaborators, sponsors, and a catchy project name. That's not something I have figured out either. Um, but if you're interested, or you know someone who would be interested, uh, my information will be on the last slide. There's my email, which is the best way to contact me. My Twitter, which I'm sadly not very active on. I have a singular tweet, but working on that. Uh, and my LinkedIn. Uh, but we can't forget about everything else that I told you in this presentation here. Just because I'm doing a fancy website or whatever, you're not off the hook. Remember, 
what I told you. You have to create your culture, defend it, and prioritize diversity. Y'all, this is so incredibly important, especially with what's happening now. And while it is about the big scale things of creating your culture, it's also about the little things, like how you interact with your employees and react to situations. And it's not an easy thing. This will take hard work. But the end result of the hard work is a stronger product, a stronger team, a stronger sense of purpose. Things that power a company over time are better as a result, but it's not easy. It's not going to be easy. But with the shitstorm that's happening in our earth right now, we need this. We need to respect each other, to bring each other into this world happily. And y'all, <laughs> please, I will be in the tech industry, possibly, sorry, my mic's doing weird things, in seven-ish years. You have seven-ish years to get your shit together, or you'll be answering to me. And remember, I'm terrifying.